the trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Are bestsellers all they're hyped up to be? The Terrible Book Club explores whether or not you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. If you've ever seen a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. Welcome to episode 48 of the Terrible Book Club. I'm Stuffy Chris, and this is Paris. <laughs> Hello, I am a clear Paris. I'm recovering from a cold here, so I might sound a little funny. Yeah, actually, I'd say it was probably more than a cold. You were pretty sick, but, uh... Yeah, it was almost a flu, maybe? But, you know, luckily, Terrible came and restored you to health, so you can continue to read these books. Uh, thank you. All hail Terrible. All hail Terrible. Yeah, clearly his doing. Uh, if if this is your first time listening to Terrible Book Club, uh, what we do here is we read books that we assume will be bad, and that's based on their cover, title, summary, or some combination thereof. So we force ourselves to read books we would never normally read. Uh, usually this experiment results in a hilariously disappointing read, but once in a while there's a book that comes through and at least partially subverts our assumptions. That didn't so, happen this time. No, no, this is not one of those times. Uh, and if you're into listening to us talk about bad books, then you probably would also be into the show called Helpless Romantics. Uh, Helpless Romantics is a podcast where two stand-up comedians who are themselves in a relationship talk about bad dating shows and even worse dating advice. Currently, they're dissecting the mid-2000s VH1 nightmare, The Pickup Artist, a show hosted by Mystery. A self-proclaimed master pickup artist and amateur illusionist who can best be described as a sentient can of Axe body spray. When they're not wading through the pickup artist swamp, the hosts also share funny stories from their lives together as a couple and as comedians. Uh, you can find Helpless Romantics anywhere podcasts are available. Uh, Cross promotion! Yeah, I mean, I've listened, I've listened to the show a couple of times and it's pretty hilarious, although I do recommend that you also wa- actually watch the pickup artist show, like before or after you listen to their commentary so you get all the visuals because i mean if you've never heard of this mystery guy and this pickup artist show it's a fucking train wreck i i don't oh it's like i feel like most people have heard of mystery by now oh i didn't know the public consciousness enough i find oh i didn't know who he was i had no idea i didn't know anything about this Oh, oh yeah, he's been around for a while. I think anyone that like knows about any of the pickup artist stuff or dating scene stuff has heard of this guy is this like where Milady started? Is this the origin of Milady? Uh, so that's a little bit of a tangled web to untangle, but a little bit yes, <laughs> okay, a little I, bit yes. I, ooh, that's my seltzer saying hello. Hey, I'm bubbly water. Um, anyway, so yeah, check out Helpless Romantics. Uh, it's a, it's pretty good. Um, back to terrible books. So this time, we read the first book in the first cycle of the Warrior series, more commonly known as the Warrior Cats series. Uh, This book is called Into the Wild by Aaron Hunter. So this is the first book in this first series. Uh, This cycle, this first cycle of six books is called The Prophecies Begin. And I actually went and counted all the books on their website. There are fucking 81 books in this world. (laughs) This is the fucking uh, Wagner's Ring cycle of cat books. (laughs) The Wagner's Catler ring, yeah, it's they, real they, bad. They, they, they built a giant opera house dedicated to just you know, making performances of this. No, that's a lie. But, uh, yeah, it's an extensive series. There's a lot of books and a lot of material. Yeah, um, and we'll get to why that probably is a little bit later. Um, as for content warnings, there's not a whole lot going on in this that would be problematic. Like, there's, like mild cartoon-like violence and death involving cats, so, like, if you can't handle hearing about cats going, Row, then, like, I don't know, shut this off, but, but it's probably fine. Do, okay, well, that's, we'll get to that. They don't really, really do that, but, um, <laughs> if you want, I can read the summary here since you've been on a talking storm when we came back on this episode, Paris. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, take us away, me, sick stuffy Chris. Here, here we go. Uh, this is the, I guess, we didn't get a physical copy of the book. I'm assuming this would be on the back of it. Epic Adventures. 
fierce warrior cats, a thrilling fantasy world. It all begins here. Read the book that began a phenomenon and join the legion of fans who have made Aaron Hunter's Warrior series number one national bestseller. For generations, four clans of wild cats have shared the forest according to the laws laid down by their ancestors. But the warrior code has been threatened, and the Thunder Clan cats are in grave danger. The sinister Shadow Clan grows stronger every day. Noble warriors are dying, and some deaths are more mysterious than others. In the midst of this turmoil appears an ordinary house cat named Rusty, who may turn out to be the bravest warrior of them all. Ta-da! Um, yeah. So, if you've ever read a book ever or seen a movie ever, uh, you can probably guess how this plays out. Yeah, this uh, is a real, uh... Just you know, hero's by journey... By the numbers. Pa- ver- paint by the, the easy numbers. Yeah, it's like, you know, the hero's journey, like, oh... Just your average house cat, but oh, he's special, and he's gonna be taken in by these wild house cats, and he's but he's gonna turn out to be even Wait, cooler than all house, those they're cats. They're not, they're not wild house cats. They're just wild, feral, out jungle uh, forest cats. I get. Yeah, they're they're feral cats, but I mean, they, you know, they don't just appear there. They're usually there because a house cat was abandoned, you know, years before, and then. I I think some of the cats in question here have been like you know third or fourth generation forest cats. Oh, it yeah. It seems yeah. like that. Oh, no, I- I'm saying that in real life, feral cats don't just appear out of nowhere. Like, they're, it's because somebody decades or years ago fucking abandoned their cat outside or the cat got lost or something, and then... You know. Maybe, they, like, in this world, the, that those house cats that were abandoned were, like, generations ago, and this these clans of cats have been somehow unmolested in a forest for... Yeah, that that, that is exactly what happens, actually. There's, like, a... I read... So, in preparation for this episode, I spent way too much time reading about this shit and, like, watching all these weird fucking fan videos on YouTube. This... My... No, I'm sorry to interrupt, but my only exposure to this was uh, My Brother and My Brother and Me uh, segment where they came across a Yahoo Answers question asking for names for warrior cats, and, and originally, you know, it was just a sort of out-of-context thing that I found funny, but when we found this book i was like oh that's what that must have been about (laughs) because the fandom around this is large enough that i guess people are naming their cats after warrior cat names oh yeah it's it's because there's like an extensive amount of um uh uh what do do you call it when people write stories based in a universe fan fiction jesus sorry um there's an extensive amount of fan fiction so i think people are just coming up with their new warrior cat names i even found some warrior cat name generators which are pretty hilarious oh good Um, yeah, the first one it gave me was Pine Dust, and I was like, that's <laughs> real stupid. That, um, that, that just sounds like it's something that will get in your lungs and fuck you up. Yeah, it really does. Uh, you can actually make bread and cookies from pine sawdust. It's not They're not very good, though. But anyway, um, so this book is based around <laughs> this idea that feral cats live in this forest very close to civilization. I mean, it seems like it's just like someone's backyard like maybe it's like a park or a nature reserve or something it's Um, a forest of some kind (laughs) and there's a road that cuts through it for sure so it's not totally secluded yeah it reminds me of yeah like a like a nature preserve a little bit outside the city sort of like the fen the fells sorry not the fens god the fens is a very different thing um, sort yeah. of like the the fells in <laughs> the nature preserve of the fens is quite different (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) uh the fells are like the uh the other god i my brain isn't working um there are several around us in boston uh there's a bunch in like waltham look it up on your own we don't need to supply (laughs) you know what i'm talking about is i get what i'm getting at you know there's some wildlife but it's close enough to it's like within civilization you know that that seems to be where they are because the book describes how they can you know they can travel pretty quickly to the edge of the human territory or what, what have you the main character just gets picked up, like, on the side. Like, he wanders out of his backyard a little bit into the forest, kind of, for a second, and he runs into one of these cats. So it's yeah. not that far at all. No, it's really not. And and the idea that these cats live in a social society is, like, not super uh, accurate in any way. I mean, I know this is a fantasy book, but it's it's... You know, it's basically happening in the regular world, like the regular human Western world that we inhabit. So it's weird to have like roads and cars and people with house cats and, you know, everything is normal. But then 
just this thing is different? Like, just this cat society is the one thing that's different? Like, I don't, I don't know about that. I, I mean, I do. The one thing I was confused about because, like, do the other animals have clans? There's the rat attack that happens. That seems very clan-like and organized, no. right? So, so I don't think so because whenever any other animal shows up, they don't appear to be able to communicate at all. They don't always show up in. Well, well with, with with the cats, but it's not like the cats are talking to their two legs masters either. I'm assuming all dialogue is just between cats and other animals. You just they just can't communicate with them effectively enough. There could be a fucking snake clan out there or whatever that just you yeah. know. I don't know. And hisses all the it's time. Fucking, I don't care. It's fucking stupid. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like it. So so like I looked it up because I didn't think this was possible because as far as I knew, only lions kind of li- lions are the only sort of feline that lives in a group scenario and even then their prides based on with like a male and a bunch of ladies that he fucks right like that's no that's it's how- based on who the monkey holds up on the rock <laughs> yes thank you chris for that's that. how it works i think um yeah so i looked it up and i guess i guess it's like sort of possible that feral cats could have a matrilineal group that they would live in like in a colony but they're it's not like the way this book is written they basically just took human relationships and like painted cats on them like no but listen paris they're giving you the inner monologue of cats they want to be true to the inner thought (laughs) yes (laughs) yeah this book really seeks to like elevate cats and make them seem like these magical mystical um Creatures that are so uh, stealthy warriors, majestic. Yes, like there's a lot of fight scenes where everyone's like, you know, there's there's intricate like tussles and rolling into each other and like calculated movements. But every single fucking cat fight I've seen starts with two cats like going up to each other, going, and there's none of that in this book at all. There's none of that. So I guess so. Feral cats can have colonies, but like in reality. When feral cats live in a colony, A, it's it's on the rarer side, so usually cats are solitary. B, when they do exist in these colonies, they're they're matrilineal and they, they do not include male cats except for male kittens. Um the second a male cat gets to a certain age, he gets kicked out and he just wanders around by himself, and like male territories will often overlap with these little matrilineal clusters. But it's nothing it's nothing really like how it appears in the book. In the book, yeah, it's very Lion King like, where it's like. Let me let me give the the picture here for how the cat society or wild cat society is organized in this book. Because apparently, in this forest, there's four separate clans of cats entirely. Uh, there's uh, Wind Clan, Thunder Clan, River Clan, and Shadow Clan. There's a leader of each clan who has a star suffix on their name. There's a medicine cat at each clan. There's oh, warriors Jesus. and like queen cats who take care of kittens. And there's like a lot of kittens that are like you know observed in each of these clans. By the way, there's a lot of fucking cats in this forest. I think. Paris. Yeah, yeah. We're all right, all right. We're gonna talk there's about like at that. Least, there's at least like fifty cats in this forest. Oh right? yeah, if if not more than that. Um, I mean, so I, I, there's a few things I want to talk about. So back to what I was talking about in terms of like the colony living that they have, like the cat society. I think what's happening here. So I I looked I looked up just to see like chronologically how this started because Into the Wild, the book that we read is the first book in the series, but of course, you know, it's not chronologically the first cat book. So There's prequels and side stories. Yeah, cat yeah. Warrior Guy Den. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I looked it up, and I guess what the author did here, well, technically authors, plural, we'll get to that in a moment, is created this like idealized version of reality where feral cats, as they exist now, Find religion and get their shit together to live more peaceably and productively. That's what You know, happens. the one thing that organizes any feral society, religion. Religion, yes. Cat religion is a big thing in this. I mean, it's it's not as, as big in the book that we read, but I guess it becomes bigger and bigger. So Chris mentioned the, the four clans, but there's also a fifth clan called Star Clan, and those are all the dead ghost cats uh, that exist in the sky as stars. They're meowing because amongst the stars Because have you seen now. The Lion King? Have you seen <laughs> Harry Potter? Cool. Put those two things together. Here we are. Um, they're they're chasing uh, the, the fancy feast in the sky. Yep. Uh, 
But yeah, so Chris brings up a really good point about how many cats there are in this forest and how close they are to people. So the main issue, the main issue in this book, the main problem is that these four clans are facing a shortage of younger cats to be to raise as warriors to go out and do all the hunting and like defend their territory and stuff. And they're like, we need more warriors because without them, we won't have enough food. Like, what are we going to do? We need, like, there's a battle over territory and therefore a battle over food. And they're like, we're going to starve to death if we don't have enough warriors. But, like, bro, there's a garbage can, like, <laughs> yeah. like a mile away. Like, this they, go. They're not that far from human civilization. They could totally send out scouting, scouting parties to get, like, a pizza box or something from the train. <laughs> yeah, Trust like, me, <laughs> they, there's way more food resources in those dumpsters than, like, scrambling through the brush for some mice or something. And it seems like there's a, like, you know, they're catching finches and mice semi-regularly yeah i mean and i just i mean cats are killing machines like that that's what cats do they they go to an area and they decimate the local wildlife look at australia it's a huge problem over there it's why (laughs) aboriginal people are eating cats i'm not that's not a joke that is a thing that's happening because uh domestic cats were brought there by the colonizing british and then you know as as cats do they escape they get out and get lost whatever they're abandoned um there's now roving bands of feral cats that are destroying bird populations and there are so many of them that average okay, people are so now wait, eating them. So r- clans of cats you just said perhaps? Paris, maybe this is it should just have to take place in Australia. Oh, oh no, so now we're gonna deal with all the stupid vocabulary with Australian cat accents? Yeah. <laughs> no! <laughs> um. So yeah, we're not sure where in the world this is. I mean, my guess is America. Or England. I think the original uh, author lady is from England, so it's either England or the U.S. Um, But anyway, basically, what we're just talking about is the fact that the main conflict in this book doesn't even exist. Like, there's no food shortage. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, if they need more cats to defend their territory, sure, but they kept going back to the fact that it meant that they wouldn't be able to catch enough food for everybody. And it's like... That's not even a problem, though. Like, you're right near people who produce tons of delicious trash. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> Wasn't uh, there a thing about, like, oh, we can't, like, have as many kittens because they, that's another mouth to feed or something? No, no. They needed more cats. That's why Rusty gets recruited, the main character. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I guess we should, I don't know. You want to quickly go through the plot here because... There's not really a plot. It's just Rusty the cat. He's a house pet. But he has the the heart of the wild inside him, and he knows that he, a house cat life isn't exactly what he wants or something. So he wanders out into the forest one night, and he encounters a uh, gray paw, uh, an apprentice cat of the Thunder Clan, who's actually just kind of playful with him at the start, and is like, "Oh, well, you know, uh, I'm part of this uh, forest clan, buddy. You better run away before my." Uh, teacher shows up his master or something i forget who exactly his mentor his mentor yeah uh and uh rusty does not get away and then the mentor cats show up and make fun of him for being a house cat and rusty's like no i can totally be a warrior cat just you see just because i sit on my fat cat ass all day and do nothing (laughs) (laughs) yeah i could totally be an elite athlete cat uh, yeah, and, Ru- and you know, they give Rusty, like, a trial, and he passes, of course, and they accept him into his, into their clan, and he goes through training to become a warrior cat, so you see. But you not train. all the cats of Thunder Clan approve right. of a, a kitty pet amongst their uh, ranks, you see, because house cats are lazy and they don't have the warrior's spirit within them. Right, but they're, you know, but the, the cats who took him in were like, or the main cat, Blue Star, she's the leader of Thunder Clan right now. She was like, but he has not yet gone and had the snipping done, you see. He yeah. is fine. Uh, I forget what they call it, but the snipping or the snippening or the cutting. The, the cutting is the like, cutting. oh, if you don't, when you go to the vet and they cut out your, your parts, then, then you're just permanently not of the warrior spirit. Because if you can't fuck and if you can't make other cats, then what's the point of fighting, right? Yeah, uh, so that has some dire undertones, but we're just going <laughs> to speed past that. Um and they're like, well, he's young, because, you know, you can only train to be a warrior if you're under six moons old, so under six months old, um, as a kitten. And because he's still a kitten, they're like, yeah, we can train him, whatever. So, you know, Rusty encounters some uh, some 
like kick back from the regular wildcats because he's a kitty pet, which is their like swear word for <laughs> for house yeah, cats. Yeah, fucking kitty pet. Get kitty the pet. hell out of here. Fuck you. What are you? There's a, kitty a lot pet? of like com- uh, compound words. Like that's the fantasy fucking way to like oh. Uh, there's a thunder path, which is the road, and the two legs are the people. So and even dumb. everyone's name is just, like, two words smashed together. If you're an apprentice, you have Paw after your name, which makes it fucking confusing. Oh, yeah. Five oh. people named Paw <laughs> talking to each other in one sentence. And Grey Paw said to Dust Paw that Fire Paw was fucking around with Raven Paw. <laughs> but <laughs> but Dust Paw didn't along. like Raven Paw's uh, face, so they went <laughs> with, to Sand Paw. And uh, Grandpa then came. And- yeah, it's, uh, honestly, that was the thing that I think that's the thing I hated the most about this was that there were so many names. It's so confusing because so many of the suffixes are repeated because they use I don't mind for young so cats. Many names so much as the repeated suffixes well, that's what making I'm saying. things hard to read. Yeah, yeah. So they use paw for any kittens, so cats under six months old, right? Um, and then they use star, the star suffix for any leaders, like blue star. Um, and then there's, uh, what's the other one? Um, there's just general, like, there's some other warrior ones too. style thing, like heart at the end. If, if yeah, heart, a warrior, fur, whatever, stripe. claw. <laughs> um, and so it's just really disorienting. So, and, and then you have the, the second layer to this, this naming problem is that, uh, as the cats go through life, they get different names as they progress. So it's like. Rusty went from Rusty the house cat to Firepaw the apprentice cat to Fireheart the warrior cat. And then he eventually gets another name later in the series. And it's just like, so in one book, the main character had three different names. And this book wasn't that fucking long, let me tell you. Like, it was unnecessary. you know, this is this. Is, you can compare this to other other fantasy series, uh, Malazan Book of the Fallen, where uh, characters will change names between books almost at will, uh, depending on what kind of demon is possessing them or what kind of company they belong to or things like that. And that you know, maybe they're just ripping off from another fantasy, well-known fantasy series. Just well, like that. Uh, first of all, Malazan, like we can't even have that conversation. Malazan is seems like an amazing series. I'm actually planning on starting to read it soon with one of my coworkers. So, um. It's all right. I got to book four, and then I kind of petered out. So, but anyway, Mal- Malazan seems like a really cool series, written by an anthropologist archaeologist who has like a crazy, crazy lore building and like a really cool magic system. Anyway, <clears throat> we're not talking about good books. We're talking about bad books here. Um, so the names were just really overwhelming. I mean, in such a short book, like, why was I introduced to like forty cats? Like, I mean, really, that's just maybe not that. Maybe there were like thirty. I don't know, but it was more than needed for 160 pages of book right can we like quick sidebar i they're all clans living in the same forest and they like fight each other for territory but they still have like clan meetings where all the leaders and warriors come together to like talk about shit yeah once a month uh once a moon they have their gat the gathering between the four trees at like the nexus of all the four territories or whatever and, and, you know, from from moon or from sunset to sunrise, there's no violence. They they just come together to, like, I don't know, fucking slam some rhymes at each other. I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, like, just cat rat like, battles at the forest. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Was... I'm here to meow. The <laughs> meow, 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 meow. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it's like. What would they have to talk about? Because besides all, like posturing at each other, yeah, I guess. Like, hey, Paris, this is where they would all gather together and be like, <laughs> that's true, but that doesn't happen. It doesn't that's happen. What this is. Instead, <laughs> it's like a fucking this- cat sock hop. Like they're like, oh man, let's like trade stories over here. Ah, go go talk yeah, to Sam. It, like, the, like kittens, uh, the kittens from each clan will like talk to each other sometimes if they bring them along, or like the apprentices or whatever. Sometimes the warriors will, like, trade war stories about, like, fighting each other. Like, yeah, remember that time like, I killed your brother, motherfucker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what happens. And also, like, the, the thing that's further perplexing about this is, like, I could understand if it was just the four leaders had their meetup because that makes sense, right? They're the, the leaders and the deputies. Every leader sure. has a deputy. Also, like, why didn't they call it, like, a meowpity or something? Like, come on, <laughs> you, you fucking catified everything else. Now that's anyway. That's the stupid. Death this, Kitty. Yeah, Death Kitty. Um, <laughs> but like, 
that's the thing about this world I hate. It's like the laziest world building where they're like, oh, we'll throw some compound words in there and like give all the cats dumb names and that's fine. Like, no, it's not fine. You didn't build a language. You didn't really build a world. Um, it's just There's real like a fucking touch phone of in. lore. There's like the scene where Blue Star takes them to the fucking moonstone from Pokemon that's in a cave or whatever. <laughs> Wait, that's, it's in po- that's in Pokemon? What? Oh, yeah. Uh, the in, in Pokemon, if you hold a moonstone next to a Clefairy, it becomes a Clefable. What is that even? What did you just say? Uh, it's a Pokemon thing. You hold the moonstone next to the Clefairy, and it turns into a Clefable. What the fuck's a Clef- Is a Clefairy just a fairy? No, no. It's cl- just look it up later. God damn it. God, I hate Pokemon. <laughs> Our um, cultural touchstones are so mismatch- mismatched sometimes. I, yeah, I, I know, really. But, um, so anyway, it's kind of it's lazy, but back, back to the gathering thing, like, it would make sense if all the leaders and their deputies, so, you know, a total of eight cats met once a month to be like, all right, fuckers, like, this is our, like, are we having, like, is there human encroachment happening? Like, you know, oh, no, there was a bulldozer in our territory. Like, I can yeah, understand. something that concerns all, all the clans cats, or whatever. Right. Absolutely. Except just, like, territory posturing and being like, you stay out of our territory. Okay, you stay out of ours. All yeah, right. like, if there were, like, mass disease or human encroachment, you know, like, industrialization, I can get why they would have to talk about that. But, like, instead, yeah, it's just this, it's not just the leaders and their deputies. It's, like, all the elderly cats, the leaders, the deputies, uh, warriors, and then some of the apprentices that are, like, doing well or something. So, and, and, and that makes even less sense when you consider the warrior code, which I'm going to pull up. Uh, oh, yeah, from, please. from the Warrior Cats website. <laughs> Cat which I Bushido have... code, please. <sighs> we, we need to have this laid out for us. I, well, the other thing is, is, like, if there's so many fucking cats in the forest, wouldn't the humans, like, do you be doing something about it? There's never a story. Maybe yeah, in later dude, books there's, like, some kind somebody... of, like, animal control enemy or something. Oh, right. If there's, like, <laughs> yeah. if there's 50 at least cats in this forest, you'd think there'd be some fucking park ranger or something going, Jesus Christ, these cats pissing all over every <laughs> tree in the world over here, eradicating all the finches and mice and everything. Yeah, and don't you think some park ranger would also be like, huh, looks like those cats are having a meeting. Wasn't huh. that cat that operating on that one two yeah. months ago? <laughs> yeah, right, like... There's think- no effort to reclaim Firepaw or Rusty or Fireheart, whatever you want to fucking call this idiot. Uh-oh. Uh, like, the- Star Clan is unable to fulfill my request. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, by the way, yeah, I don't know if you if you found yeah. that, but the website's real shitty. I tried to go to their store and like two of the links were broken. Oh, so, they um, they uh they just redid the whole thing. Um, it's so you very... might not be able to pull up the cat Bushido. No, quote. no, no. I no, I, nah, I got it. I, I got it. I'll find it. Uh, <laughs> which warrior cat are you? Visit the Moon Pole. Um, yeah, it's because of those different clans. That's clearly like a, a Gryffindor Slytherin. Ravenclaw Hufflepuff analogy here for you to buy your merch for whatever clan you seek to belong to because boy did they merch that shit out real good. Which is funny because you know in this first book, sure there's the four clans, but they don't have like slogans and shit. But then they they fucking like backpedaled on that. They were like, oh yeah, they have slogans. Yeah, so it's just like Harry Potter. They got slogans. That's fine. You want a cup? You want a cup with that on it? Yeah, you want how a about, cup with that how about slogan? A canvas? How about a backpack? Oh, it's so gross. It wasn't what I was sad about is there wasn't even any like cat related objects like cat toys or yeah. a, a mat for your food bowl or even just a food bowl for a fucking cat that I'm assuming a fan of right, this book right would have. Would... <laughs> All right, so here's the warrior code. The principles a warrior cat must live by. Set down by the original warrior cats who established the clans all those years ago. One, defend your clan even with your life. You may have friendships with cats from the other clans, but your loyalty must remain to your clan as one day you may meet them in battle. Two, do not hunt or trespass on another clan's territory. Three, elders and kits must be fed before apprentices and warriors. Unless they have permission, apprentices may not eat until they have hunted to feed the elders. Prey is killed only to be eaten. Give thanks to Starclan for its life. A kit must be at least six moons old to become an apprentice. Newly appointed warriors will keep a silent vigil for one night after receiving their warrior name. A cat cannot be made deputy without having mentored at least one apprentice. The deputy will become clan leader when the leader dies or retires. After the death or retirement of the deputy, the new deputy be dep the the dep new, kitty uh, the Paris. new dep kitty must be chosen before moon high. A gathering of all four clans is held at the full moon during a truce that lasts for the night. There shall be no fighting among clans at this time. Boundaries must be checked and marked daily. Challenge all trespassing cats. No warrior may neglect a kit in pain or in danger, even if that kit is from a different clan. 
The word Whoa, of the clan the leader. I thought it was I, respect yeah, hang your on. clan. Yeah, hang on. The word of the clan leader is the warrior code. An honorable warrior does not need to kill other cats to win his battles unless they are outside the warrior code or it is necessary for self-defense. A warrior rejects the soft life of a kitty pet. All right. So if you don't want these cats fucking socializing, maybe don't have cat social hour once a month. Like, yeah, I, it seems really contradictory to me. Yeah. To be like, don't fucking do anything with those other clans, except for once a month when y'all get together to like lick each other a bit or something. Yeah, But like, remember, you might have to like kill that cat later. So like, <laughs> don't be too cool with them. And and it doesn't say it in the code. and It doesn't mention it in this book. But apparently it is cat illegal it's against cat law to be fucking a cat from another clan like having cats with them apparently <laughs> yeah you know what? totally different subset uh cat law like c- kind of similar to bird law actually but uh <laughs> yeah it's so that's the thing i don't know makes no fucking sense uh <sighs> was this is this warrior cats that are only in this forest like do other cats from around the world have to follow is this like a global cat un thing or is it just this forest like some warriors or like some like stray cats from ages ago were like okay well maybe we're just the four original cats and we're each a clan uh, yeah i mean i mean yeah yeah i mean the, the not in this book but like i said i looked it up and apparently what happened was there are a bunch of feral cats living in this living in this forest and they had this huge bloody battle and most of the cats died um, and the few <laughs> remaining survivors, when they kind of, like, came to after the battle, they Said, all... Said, let's keep fighting each other. No, they were all visited by the ghosts of the dead cats. Oh. And the whoa. dead cats, you know, the star, original Star Clan were like, you get your shit together, stop fighting, you know, form these clans, like, I don't know. A- the, except the fucking fight a ghost little cats. bit, because we need books and yeah, conflict, yeah, so fight a little bit. The ghost cats are the ones who inspired those first cats to start the clans and that's how they started their worship of the star clan the ghost cats in the sky um so <laughs> ghost cats in the sky ghost cats in the sky um so presumably this is a phenomenon only in this forest in this area so much like true to life religion they probably like got real fucked up on some catnip and made up a whole thing after a bad trip well, no, it was after a battle, so they could have been pretty delirious. I don't know. But a bunch of cats saw the same thing, so I guess ghost cats are real. Um, <laughs> so that's that's kind of Do the background. Do they meow I mean, or boo? Or would they boo? <laughs> it's a meow with a vibrato harder than normal. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and like an organ sting behind it. I don't know. Yeah, I anyway. The plot of this particular book was very plotting and boring. Um, most of it was hunting, patrolling, and fighting scenes. It sounds interesting, but it's, it's really not. Especially when, as Chris mentioned, the fighting scenes aren't really what regular fighting scenes would be like for cats. Um, yeah, like I said, the, every cat encounter I've seen, whether on you know YouTube clips or real life, it's just there's a lot of posturing more than the actual fight itself, it seems like. There's a lot um, of build up to it at first, which you can say for pretty much any animal fight too. But so like, there's a lot of like stealth attacks in this book. Yeah. Also, let's l- let's. Talk, I want to read the rat fight because it makes no fucking sense to me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah he- all right. So the context is that uh, fire paw, gray paw, raven paw, tiger claw, and blue star are on their way to, to the moon stone. Find- the moon- nope. Nope. To find the kittens. No. I thought they were on. This is where they, they were going to the Moonstone first, and after they come oh, back yeah. from the Moonstone yeah, is yeah, when yeah, the kittens you're right, are stolen. You're right. you're right. Okay, so they're on their way to the Moonstone, which is like their magical fucking I don't know grotto, drugs um, rock or something. Yeah, Pride Rock, Pride Cat Rock, <laughs> and th- this happens. Um, by now, the sun had lifted its head above the horizon. The hedgerows sparkled with dew, promising another warm day. The cats padded along the edge of the ditch. Firepaw looked down into the deep gully, steep-sided and filled with nettles. Firepaw could smell prey scent. There was something familiar about the bitter odor, but it was one he hadn't smelled for a long time. An ear-splitting squeal made Firepaw whip around. Ravenpaw was struggling and clawing at the earth. Something had hold of his leg and was dragging him down into the ditch. Rats! spat Tiger Claw. Barley has sent us into a trap! Before they could react, all five cats were surrounded. Huge brown rats swarmed out of the ditch, squeaking shrilly. Firepaw could see their sharp front teeth glinting in the early dawn light. Suddenly, one leaped onto Firepaw's shoulder. Fiery pain shot through his shoulder as the rat sank its teeth into his flesh. 
Another grasped his leg between its powerful jaws. Firepaw flung himself down and writhed madly, trying to shake free. He knew the rats were not as strong as he was, but there were so many of them. Yowls, hisses, and spits told him that the others were also being attacked. Firepaw slashed fiercely with his claws, slicing out at a rat that held onto his leg. It let go, but another one gripped his tail. Fast as lightning, powered by fear and rage, Firepaw fought and hacked at his attackers. Twisting his head around, he sank his teeth into the rat that had embedded itself into his shoulders. He felt the bones of its neck crunch in his mouth and its body go limp before it fell away onto the dirt track. Firepaw gasped with pain as yet another rat leaped onto his back and sank its teeth in. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw a flash of white fur. For a moment, he was confused. Then he felt the rat being dragged off him. Firepaw spun around to see Barley flinging the rodent into the ditch. Without hesitating, Barley glanced around and sprinted over to Blue Star. She was writhing on the path, covered in rats. In a flash, Barley had the spine of one between his teeth and was plucking it off her with practiced ease. He spat it onto the ground and grabbed another in his mouth as Blue Star thrashed beneath him. Firepaw rushed over to Graypaw, who was being attacked from both sides by two smaller rats. Firepaw lunged at the nearest one, giving it a bite that left it dead. Graypaw managed to turn and pin down the other with his claws. He grabbed it with his teeth and flung it into the ditch as hard as he could. It did not come back. They're running away, Tiger Claw yowled. Sure enough, the remaining rats were fleeing down into the safety of the ditch. Firepaw could hear the scrabbling of small paws disappearing into the nettles. Like, okay, so many questions here. One, why did these fucking rats attack these cats? It makes no goddamn sense. Like, I... (laughs) Well, this is evidence to me that there's a rat clan, right? (laughs) Because they all act organized, and they're like, let's fuck these cats up. They're by themselves all of a sudden. There's a lot of us, and then we can get rid of Blue Star or something. Like, the cl- cat clay. Uh, they probably don't know, like, the cat organization. They just know, hey, cats fuck with us all the time. Let's get them. I don't, I don't see any motivation there. Like, these cats were just walking by, and suddenly, like, dozens of rats come out of a ditch and, tr- and swarm them? Because like- they're a rat clan and they <laughs> oh have to God. defend their rat. That's the only explanation. So, <laughs> I hate which you. Means, which <laughs> means there's like a snake clan out there somewhere because at one point Ravenpaw kills an adder in the brush and brings it back. And then all the apprentices just kind of play with the corpse for a little bit. So you know there's like a couple like snake clan spies like slithering over the hilltop looking into where the cats are, <laughs> seeing them like play with the the adder corpse and be like those motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, uh so I don't know. I mean, I know this is a kids book, but like I just wish children's book authors would give kids some more credit and challenge them a bit more instead of just serving them plot points and the twists on a platter. Like, there are literally sentences in this book uh, that say things like, oh no, is, do you know, this cat really evil? He must have really killed whatever cat. Is he trying to pin this on other cats? It's like, come on. Like, like kids can figure it out if, you, if you're a good writer and you give them context clues and, and you know, lead them there you don't have to just tell them and it's so stupid in this case it was a uh, tiger claw one of the uh sort of senior warriors of thunder clan had uh come at the beginning of the book he came back claiming to have killed an, a rival clan clan's warrior who had killed one of thunder clan's warriors but turns out it was that thunder clan warrior that had killed the other clan's warrior and tiger claw killed the thunder clan cat in an attempt to like take credit for it and he painted it as revenge, but then Ravenpaw, his apprentice, let uh he let some of that detail slip at the uh the meeting between the clans when Ravenpaw was talking to other apprentices. Right, right. So it, like you don't think like Tiger Claw would have like told Ravenpaw about that beforehand, or Ravenpaw would have understood to keep his mouth shut about it when he heard Tiger Claw, you know, saying his version or whatever. Yeah, earlier. and so then you have uh the cats, like the young cats, all the paws. They're all scared of Tiger Claw because, you know, Ravenpaw, whatever, tells everyone, tells them, like, what happened, what really happened. And he's, like, a sadistic murderer who's just doing a power grab. And, um, I don't know, like, every time they have, they have an opportunity to tell the leader cat, Blue Star, they don't. And they then, just don't, yeah. And then they, Blue like, Star <laughs> dies and then Tiger Claw becomes leader. Firepaw just, like, forgets. Yep. Like a bunch of times to tell Blue Star, like they'll be. There was one time where they he went on a training session with Blue Star, and he's like, "Oh, I just forgot to tell her about Tiger Claw being an asshole and like a, a clan within clan murderer." I don't know what, if there's a word for that. Clan tricide. Yeah, there's that. Like, uh, Shadow Clan is like trying to take over. They like 
Shadow Clan like kicked River Clan's ass and like kicked them out of their own territory. Wind right? Clan, no, it's Wind it's Clan. Wind okay, Clan. kicked Wind Clan's ass. Whatever, kicked them out of their territory. <laughs> And then they're, like, threatening ThunderClan. They're like, well, if you don't give us hunting grounds, we're just going to take them by force. Me And, like, we need food. And, again, just point that cat to the nearest dumpster. Like, it's not that far. <laughs> I did This whole conflict about territories and, and food it does not, it, it doesn't exist. It's just not, doesn't need to be there. Um, I think the cats also tend to value, like, oh, it's fresh meat more than, like, it tastes better than anything else. But if you're really fucking starving, exactly. you're going to find those resources somewhere. Shadow Clan's kind of like... Uh, ta- they, they do the taboo thing of like eating a vulture food, I think they call it, or like raven food or something. They, yeah, they're just, eating like, rotting, rotting food, yeah. Pro but food like, is rotting food. I mean, do, do the warrior clans really care where a fucking slice of pizza came from? Like, no, exactly. Like, you're not gonna tell me a cat's gonna see some some steak tips and be like, no, I'm not gonna eat that. Like, no, it's gonna eat it, it's gonna like it. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. make any sense. Um, so yeah, I mean, the major, the major events are just that Rusty gets inducted into ThunderClan. He becomes a really cool guy, apprentice. He makes apprentice because friends. He just is. Yeah, yeah, like all main characters in these like hero's journey fantasy stories. He doesn't even really develop it over that long of a no. time. It's like a couple months happen and all of a sudden he's like a really trained cat warrior when he was like just fucking rolling out of bed at noon and like going to bed at three like any other house cat like two months before. Well, I think I think the other the only thing I would I would say to rebut that is that this is cat time. So, sure, okay. you know, like cats develop into adulthood pretty quickly. So I, yeah, but, but it's not obvious through the text that he's developing or changing at all. He's the same cat the whole time. Like this book is 160 pages and I feel like we met 30 cats and a bunch of shit happened, but like, I don't care about any of it because none it's of the characters t- were developed. It's training things that, like, it's not like they really develop that much by way of skill, especially Firepaw. Some of the other cats, it talks about them like, doing, like, climbing training or something like that. Yep, but Firepaw yep. just automatically succeeds in, like, life-threatening battles when yep. it's his first time out when he's had, like, one sparring match with Blue Star. Yeah, and I, I don't like... So, yeah, like, the characters aren't very developed... Which is weird because I looked, you know, I as I was doing research about this, of course, I came across a lot of fan material. And the fan base talks about how, oh, how developed the characters are. They're so developed. I care so much about them. And I'm like, I don't. I don't see it. I mean, not in this first book anyway. I mean, we didn't okay, read the other 80 books, yeah. but. Paris, give me the defining differences between Dustpaw, Sandpaw, Graypaw and Ravenpaw. Give me a defining difference between uh, any of those besides the color of their fur. Besides the color of their fur. I think one of them's a girl. Yeah, uh, that's that's Sandpaw. Um, and like Ravenpaw is real shitty at hunting, right? No, no, he's shy. He he's the one that killed shy. the Adder, so he yeah. has some ability. But he's shy. He's like uh, quiet because Tiger Claw gives him shit all the time. Yeah, so. Yeah, I honestly that's same same with the adult cats. Like this is again Tiger Claw is the only one with any personality because he's evil. Right. And and this is again why all the names are so maddening and the number of characters is so maddening is because there's nothing to differentiate them except for their name. And it's like you're not gonna remember a name if you can't attach it to any distinguishing feature. So like it's pointless. There's some that there's a couple of cats that have a distinguishing feature, but that's it. Uh, yellow fang or yellow tail is like old and shitty. Yellow fang is the, is like one of the only ones that actually had a developed personality. She's this this old like refugee cat from Shadow Clan. Like she she was their old medicine cat, cat right? And she can got we talk about out. medicine cats for a second? Actually, okay. Can we talk about how um the first thing I read about medicine cat made me cry laughing because I thought it was such a stupid fucking idea. <laughs> yeah. You know, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it for you. Uh, this is uh from the medicine cat of uh, Thunder Clan Spotted Leaf, I think. Spotted Leaf, yeah. Who uh who little baby Firepaw has a fucking chub for at the beginning? Um, <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> it's really weird. It's so forced too, but um, oh shit! There's not really anything like they nuzzle once. I don't think that's much of a thing. Besides, like he kind of cares about her for some reason. She dies later, by the way. She's just mur- immediately murked <laughs> at the end of one chapter well, because someone yeah. had to die that meant something. So I guess it's Spotted Leaf because it's the only cat that had like a meaningful interaction. No, with Blue, Blue Star died too. 
True. And then right at the beginning, that it starts off with that cat dying because Tiger Claw murdered it. it was his like oak fluff but you know, or something? You don't even know I don't who know. that is, so that doesn't really yeah. count for like impact. Shit! Why can't I find the fucking spider web thing? I don't uh, think you really need to read it out loud. <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty fucking funny. Um, but anyway, the first encounter you have with the, med- the medicine cat concept is when some cat gets wounded and there's another cat that's like taking a spider web and shoving it into the wound with its paw. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, that medicine cat, she's great. She's going to save that cat's life. And you're just like, like, I hope they're not having surgeries because cats don't have opposable thumbs, man. Like, I don't, <laughs> How is it picking I, up the spider web? Is it just like kind of like doing that weird cat scoop and like doing the weird cat like claw pat like when they're hitting something a bunch of times but oh here we go spotted leaf was crouching beside tiger claws wounded apprentice using her teeth and front paws to pass wads of cobweb onto his shoulder wound what's okay. spotted leaf doing stopping the bleeding like i just and just the concept of like so they're medicine cats so every clan has one medicine cat i think it's always a female it's always a child no female, i think running nose of unmarried. shadow clan was a dude Oh, you're right, you're right. But it's usually a childless female. Sometimes, it, but you have to be, like, a childless cat or something. Um, and they live in these little, like, huts, like, wise woman huts with, like, <laughs> herbs and stuff. And you can go in and be, like, you, like go to the cat pharmacy and be like, hey, I need two pounds of crushed nettle and, like, one pound of moss. And Spotted also, Leaf's uh, like, all right, coming right up. Please? No, I gave you catnip the other day. And they also use opium seeds to dull pain, so, like, there must be some cats addicted to heroin in this world. <laughs> the the be- cat opiate epidemic is a crisis, <laughs> let me tell you guys. Maybe that's what book number, like, 47 through, like, 81 is about. I don't know if we've been up and down Catthodone Mile or not, but oh, this forest has no. one. Meowthodone Mile? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, sorry. Dr- drug addiction is serious, and we're not, it is. we're not making fun of people who are addicted to drugs, but this, co- like... In a world where cats are using opium to dull pain, the logical step there is that yeah. there are cats addicted to opium. So, Spotted Leaf, look, just give me another seed. Come on. Like, <laughs> Spotted I, Leaf, I need I, an extra My seed. back is really hurting today. Tiger Claw was up my ass literally earlier, man. So I know you got him. I know you got him, Leaf. See him. <laughs> See him behind also, that counter. Also, like, they, they don't have any jars or containers, right? Like, So this shit I, yeah, is just like, I, loose on yeah, the floor. Yeah, I don't know what their inventory <laughs> system like honestly um but it is very weird that just that there's this one like you know this one store and this <laughs> weird doctor cat it's just so that's the thing that really like right at the beginning i was like this is fucking bullshit i hate this and it was like page eight or something and i was or 30 i don't know it was early in the book can we talk about just that we, we actually haven't talked about the authors or the the way this stuff was written because that, I think that's very, very uh, intrinsic to how this book feels to me. It's like, I, like I said, very by the numbers, almost like phoned in kind of fantasy story where like, Oh, there's a special guy and he's especially becomes a special warrior and there's training scenes. And with there's some world building here to sell some merchandise. And that's, it's like uh, paying for a girlfriend experience versus actually having a girlfriend. I'm sure you can get some <laughs> satisfaction out of it. I'm sure there's people out there that oh, provide no. us a wonderful service like that. And if you need that to get through your, your week or whatever, fine. Go ahead. If you want to buy cat books to get through your week, fine. Go ahead. But boy, does it just feel like a like a, like a a cold, uncaring hand job. <laughs> yeah, you might get there, but it's like... What's the point if they're not into it? That's a, if there's no passion. Oh wow, that's a great analogy, Chris. Ten ten points to Chris. Um, because it's 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 literally like it was like Harper Collins going yeah. to some editor and being like, "Hey, we need a, a series about feral cats," and the editor's like, "Ugh, all right. Uh, what do you two write? Is what can you do with this?" Yeah, so that's actually what happened. So Harper Collins, they're a major publishing house. I'm sure you've heard of them. If not, turn around a book in your house, and Harper yeah. Collins is probably on the back of it. Um. So, you know, HarperCollins, Penguin, you know, it's one of those big, big publishing houses. They tell their editor, Vicky Holmes, hey, yo, we need a series about feral cats. Like, legitimately, they that, those are the words they use. We need a series about feral cats for kids. So she creates the original concept in the early 2000s, but, like, she doesn't really like cats. And she's like, I don't <laughs> want to do this. And <laughs> this is so a shitty finds, idea, but I guess my boss told me yeah, to do it. So yeah. now we have a whole marketing empire because some yep. couple of execs in the early 2000s were like, hey, what if you made Harry Potter but with cat? 
yep, that's exactly what happened. And so she was like, all right, fine. I wrote, you know, the original concept, but like, I don't really want to be bothered. So I found this other idiot who's way more into cats. She's going to take this project on. Oh, and here's her friend. And like this spiraled out of control to the point where total corporate madness has taken over now. So Holmes is no longer involved. And there's an entire team of people who create the plot plot arcs, write the stories and edit them. So Aaron Hunter started off as a pseudonym for like Vicky Holmes and the other two original ladies and now it's like twelve people. Like it's, it's a collective. It's a, it's it's a, a, it's crazy, a cat collective. Like the before, it used to say that oh, Erin Hunter is actually a collective of these six women, and it gave their profiles. But their updated website now says that it's not only five authors because Vicky dropped out. It's five women, and then another team of people who create plot arcs, and another team of people who like edit and write. So there's at minimum. Five people, but it seems like there are more than that. So, I mean, how many people does it take to write a dumb cat fantasy book? Like, come <laughs> on, guys. I think you put it pretty well earlier when we were talking. You said, how many people does it take to rip off Harry Potter and Redwall? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, I mean, it's so it's just a total corporate cash grab, like Chris mentioned. I mean, this is not... This is YA fantasy, so young adult fantasy by committee that some wealthy executive dreamed up someday. It's not a later a labor of love from like cat aficionados, and, and I feel not. like it seems like the fan base really believes that though. Like even even though the website is very upfront about the fact that it's not people, all the people who seem to be into this book. I mean, mostly kids. Let's be serious. This is a kids book, but well, they have was, a lot of adult uh, fans too. You sent too. me a YouTube link of what sounded like a very uh, older man, not older, but like maybe twenties kind of fellow uh titled uh warrior cat pregnancy rant so oh. uh, <laughs> there's yeah, some people actually. real passionate about this way more passionate than the writers are let me tell you because the writers are just in this for a paycheck fellas they're only in this to sell you cat clan mugs and shirts yeah they're only in this to sell you like knock off harry potter merch um yeah if you want to laugh uh i'm just gonna tell you right now look up warrior cat song on youtube and there are some i was Te- tears it's were streaming down almost. my face earlier because I found one that was like a really bad rap and it had way too many words in it. Like the person was just cramming syllables in. It was just, it was just out of this world. Just cramming as many cat related terms yeah. as they can. It's a, it also like a lot of these things. I find like if there's like a vaguely for related thing fandom happening there's always some kind of like musical theater based album connected to it every fucking time paris and it's always terrible and it's always terrible um but like you know continuing um on uh talking about the authors and how this is really just like a corporate poop from the executive but um they even chose the name aaron hunter for the group author pseudonym because they were like, oh, it'll be shelved next to Brian Jocks, who was the author of Redwall. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, and I was just like... By the like, way, Redwall, you. infinitely better than this shit. Oh, yeah, like, get out of here with those comparisons. People, so all over the internet, they're like, oh, it's like Redwall. It's not like Redwall. Get no, fucked. No, Redwall has way more, ca- like, I, Redwall is definitely like kids' books, and I read them, at, like, when I was in school, and some people were like, ah, what's up with your fucking rat night book, buddy? And right there, I was like, it's actually <laughs> pretty good, man, because the characters had some depth to it. There was, like, cool interactions between certain animal groups. That's what I thought this series missed, is, like, Maybe if you're not going to differentiate the cats much, if they all act like cats, if you bring in other animals, that might help you differentiate between characters a little more because you can give yeah. different kinds of animals different personalities at least. Right, exactly. I mean, I, I just really feel like they, like like you said, it's just real, it's just a real sad hand job of a book. Like it's It can get you there, like the, the r- scenes make sense in chronological order. The, the dialogue sure, sure. isn't great, but like it's it's fine, serviceable. I guess. Um, although I do really hate how they never they never use um, like said or spoke. It's always um, meowed or morowed or I don't know. They don't they, know. they try add, to add cat that's adding words some flavor, in. man. I'm fine with that. Yeah. That's fine. Um, yeah, I just yeah, it's not like it's not um, 
the writing isn't nearly as terrible as a lot of things you've read on the show, but like you said, it's just so uninspired. It's just so bland. It's, it's like tapioca. Ugh, yeah, it's... <laughs> that, I was, it was very hard to make my way through this book because I could like I just knew it was going to end up like, oh, they're going to fight at the end and Tiger Claw is going to maybe get ousted and then Fire Paw is going to become a warrior and then it's going to be the end there. That's it. Like, maybe there'll be a prophecy and there was a prophecy about... Oh, fire is the only thing to save your clan. I wonder what that's going to be. <laughs> hmm, I wonder like, when the main cat is red and they constantly talk about how his coat and is red and, and shining and in the sun. Fucking fire. And he's named fucking fire. That's just handing it to you. Like, just I know. At least give me a sub layer of like, I don't know, flame will save your clan. It'll, give me a basic synonym. Yeah, like, like your clan will... Burn to success. I don't know. Like any, any, <laughs> anything. And like Burn heat the clan down to survive. Exactly. Right. Like heat your clan to at least 400 degrees to achieve <laughs> yeah. transcendence. Put it directly <laughs> in the center of the oven. Maybe with a piece of stone if you. I mean, you know, but the, and that's the thing. Like give kids more credit. They can understand and piece together more than you think. And I, I just don't like these books that don't require children to think at all. And it's it's oh, it's maddening. And um, sorry, I just I just remembered this other thing about the author I wanted to talk about was that um, while while right now in present time in 2019, the Warrior Cats website is very open about the fact that Aaron Hunter is like, you know, a, c- a conglomerate created by Harper Collins. Cat conglomerate. Yeah, cat conglomerate. <laughs> When this book first co- came out, when Into the Wild first came out, like the first cycle, they totally pretended that she was a real person. Because if you go to the end of the book, it says about the author. Erin Hunter is inspired by a love of cats and a fascination with the ferocity of the natural world, as well as having a great respect for nature and all its forms. Erin enjoys creating rich mythical explanations for animal behavior shaped by her interest in astrology and standing stones. That So no, they fucking that... they fucking pretended that she was a real person who loved cats and had an interest in the natural. Like, no, but some executive at some board meeting was like, Hey, let's do Harry Potter cats. And some lady got it as an, as a fucking work project and was yeah. like, Oh, I don't even like cats. Like they're so, so full of it shit. Got like dropped on her desk with like three other, like stupid fantasy ideas. Like, yep. Hey, what if you made a dog battle Royale? <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, right. It's like, hey, you know, what if we do like Aladdin but with angelfish? Like, can we <laughs> can we see some of that? Like, Vicky, Vicky, we need that. I how's, would love to hear a, a version of Under the Sea crossed with uh, Prince Ali. From, <laughs> like those two songs crossed over. Under Prince Ali, under. <laughs> <Ali>. <laughs> yeah. Under the prince. Oh, oh wait, no. no. Uh, God. Oh. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'm I'm crying. I'm wiping tears from my eyes. Oh lord. Um, <laughs> that, like, that, I feel bad that we don't have much more to say. Like we didn't really dig into like any detail on the th- shit here because there's really not much to say. It's that bland. Yeah. This is this is like that. You know all those shades of white that look the same unless yeah. you really squint at them real hard. <laughs> That's like what this series is like. If I mean, if the first book is any indication. Once again, I'm just going to reiterate that there are 81 books in this series. 81. I mean, I, I guess it's a smashing success. Pa- Paris, maybe we have to do cash in on this somehow, and we should do Dog Battle Royale or Aladdin <laughs> Angelfish. <laughs> I mean, the live action Aladdin's coming out, which oh, yeah. I was like, not going to lie. Gonna be, Par- we're going to be so upset when it's all, <sighs> it's like a Finding Nemo cr- like no. crossover. No, <laughs> No, I was like kind of excited about it because little baby Paris loved Aladdin. Um, but got some I good songs. Out, but then I found out that Will Smith was the genie, and my heart just shattered. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's gonna have to be the one to sing Prince Ali, and that kind of sucks. That's so weird. Oh, it's probably gonna, gonna like, be a rap. It's gonna be like yeah, Prince gonna... Ali, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> no, no, don't ruin that song. It's such a good song. Oh, also, gonna he's gonna it. do. Oh, Paris, he's gonna do. You never had a friend like me. <sighs> Oh, you know it's what? It's not going to be good. You know what I hope, though. I hope that just Will Smith touching the genie character and just just wreaking havoc on it will create a disturbance in the veil between worlds, and Robin Williams will come back to us yeah. and avenge the legacy. He'll possess someone. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I hope he does possess someone. Hopefully, it's not Will Smith. Although I'd also accept that. Um, 
that would be a that would be a fun uh b-roll reel or <laughs> blooper reel uh yeah i i don't know that i i have anything else more to say i mean we got some other things to talk about that aren't this book um but yeah i mean in terms of recommending it hell no i would not recommend this if if you're looking for books for kids like i'd tell you to read red wall i'd tell you to read mouse guard i'd tell you to read animorphs over this even yeah, like animorphs like seriously way more personality than this yeah i mean there are so many things i would recommend to middle schoolers who which this is aimed at you know over this uh so i do not recommend it's real bland um I mean, the only... The fun parts about it for me was, like, the implications around the ideas. Like I said, like, I always just kept thinking about... Because every time you see, like, a, a group of cats together in a video, uh, they're always startled by something small. Like, one of them, like, taps a, a toy that was next to all of them, and they all flip the fuck out and run away. So I just imagine, like, all those cats, like, sitting in, like, the fucking four trees gathering the clans thing, and then, like, a twig snaps, and they all flip the fuck out and run away. <laughs> yeah, it definitely would have been would have been more intriguing if the cats were written more realistically, but I get it, you know, it's a fantasy book, so it's not supposed to be real, but I just, I have a really hard time suspending my disbelief unless you make it really convincing. Like, like a but Red Wall and Mouse Guard, before, like, I buy oh, into the, that. They try to explain cat behavior, and, like, the internal cat monologue is, like, in the fucking about the author section on the websites and in the book too. Yeah. Um, oh, right. Chris, I, you know, I kind of want to talk about how shitty the names are. So we, we mentioned some names, but the names get dumber as the books go on because they keep adding characters and they like, don't know what to smash together anymore. <laughs> so we go from things that make sense, like yellow Fang, probably cause she has like a discolored tooth and like fire pelt because these are red fur or whatever to like, Twig Branch. I'm not kidding. That's literally a name. Twig Branch. I don't know. Uh, a leaf Needle. Yeah, it's it gets real stupid as things continue. Um, and I'm just gonna send you. I'm just gonna send Chris something that I wanted. I wanted him to react to in real time. So right now, do I have to have like Facebook up for this or something, Paris? No, I sent it to you over Skype. Um, so right now, I sent Chris a link to the official WarriorCats.com website. And to a, sp a specific segment of the website, because to me, it's like the best insane representation. See, I saw this on the website, but I didn't <laughs> click it. <laughs> I did. You have to zoom in. So what I sent him. Beware. There are many spoilers ahead. This is your warning from Starclan. So continue at your own risk. Paris, what are you sending me into? Uh, I sent you. The, the family tree. The family tree. It has to load. And it's such a large um like vector image that you have to you have to zoom in all like i don't know 10 times just to see anything good it, lord yep it's horrifying there's like um, a play button here yeah it like activates the tree i don't know so you oh, can zoom in god all right i'm gonna read you some names all right we got frog this leap is... we got sunfish <laughs> beetle nose grass whisker vixen kit Dawn Flower Willow Shine Moss Belt Tumble Kit. Oh god. Uh we Red got Rose Paw? Yeah, we got Flash Nose. <laughs> <laughs> just shows you his nose real quickly. Just shows you his nose. Yep, and then just real quick. Before you can even uh, leave. Oh, what's this one? Hair pounce. Small ear. That's fine. Uh Running Wing. Okay. My computer is like the fan is like going so <laughs> fast right now. Trying oh to man, how did thing. your how did, uh, what brings you into the Apple Store today? Well, Whoa. you see, Whoa, hold on a second. <laughs> There's a cat named Poppy Don. That's just <laughs> a drug addict cat, right? Like, yeah, my, yeah, you might, he must be the heroin addict. Cherry Paw, uh, Tulip Kit, <laughs> Dust Pelt, Fern Cloud, Larch Kit, Shire Paw, Birch Fall, Brack Wing. Hair flight, mist mouse, woolly tail, pale Daisy bird. Toe. Oh my god, toad step, mouse whisker. <laughs> oh, honey fern. Spider. I, I, okay, there's one cat here that said spider leg. For a second, I thought it said Spielberg. I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Snap paw, fern song, sorrel stripe, fly paw, leap shade. Oh my god, store kit? Quail Fly kit. kit. Gorse Stag kit. Leap. Stag leap. Uh, <laughs> cloud runner. 
I mean, it goes on like this. Like, if you want to amuse yourselves, just go to the WarriorCats.com no, family no, tree go, section. Just go look up the My Brother, My Brother and Me Warrior Cats clip. That's That'll be enough for you. The way the McElroy brothers narrate that thing is hilarious. And that's... Uh, that's true. was my first exposure to that podcast in general. So, you know, one star. Oh, boy. <laughs> Lavender Kid. This is insane. I just Brindle wing sounds like some kind of bird STD. <laughs> oh man, you you hear Carly got brindle wing? No way. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is this is insane. I just wanted to see what would happen if I just sent this to you without telling you what I was sending you. Leaf pool, squirrel flight, broken shadow, fallen leaves, jay feather. What that? Okay. Ooh, this pebble is- shine, twig branch, violet shine. Blossom Heart, Sharp Claw. Wow. Okay. Jessamy. All right. <laughs> Jessamy. What? So, yeah. Well, I think there are some like house cats in here because there's one called Scourge and something else. But yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, fuck the shit. Anyway, I just wanted I just wanted to read some of those terrible yeah, names. Yeah, that, that was a pretty good saw socks and Scourge and Ruby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think those are all the the kitty and pets. Kids. Apparently, there are also like swears in the book, but I didn't catch them. I guess, like, cat swears, it's, like, mouse dung or, like, you know, kitty pet mouse dung. No, nah, like, it's okay. just, oh, fuck, I can't believe I had to kill <laughs> <laughs> But, all right. I, th- I think I'm done talking about this book. We can talk yeah. about some terrible book-related things. Um, sure. I don't know. It was a while ago now, but uh, this website, Votable, which is, I guess, a very um, new kind of Reddit-like website... Uh, did an interview with us about the show. They have a blog called the Media Filter Blog, and um, Paul, I think his name is Paul, did a me- did an interview with us. Um, that's been up for a couple weeks, so if you want to just read a little thing about us, it's up. Uh, the Media Filter Blog at votable.net. Uh, and just, I, this is just kind of a, something I wanted to bring up, but, um, you know, the end of the year was coming a few weeks ago, and I was like, man, you know, I feel like, eh, I feel like the show didn't really do that well this year. But then I looked at statistics, and and the show has done very well this year. I just, I don't know. It's like you don't realize while you're living uh, living it, I guess. But I, I crunched some numbers, and like, uh, from 2017 to 2018, our listenership grew by 305%. <laughs> so hey, that's I guess, a number. <laughs> I guess we're doing something right. Um, yeah, you know it's it's always a slow start, man. You know, once the no, it, we'll see how this goes. We I don't I'm not looking for fame out of this anyway, but it's no, really no. cool that even a handful of people are listening and no, a handful it, of people supporting monetarily. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it seems like since we started having a consistent schedule, you know, putting an episode out every two weeks, our listenership has really grown. Um, and we had some really great months. I mean, we're a small show. Like, I mean, I know saying our our audience grew three hundred percent sounds really huge, but I mean. We're we're a small show. Like we're we're yeah. talking we're talking some thousands here. We're not talking like hundreds of thousands of downloads yeah. or anything. But um, just wanted to point out that like July was our best month this year in terms of downloads because we got those two free ad spots on uh, Radio Public and Podbean. So very cool. Um, and then December was our second best month of the year. Um, it was only like eighty downloads shy of July, and and December we did that on our own. So. You know, thanks everybody for sticking with the show and for maybe sharing it, maybe giving us a review on iTunes, whatever. Thank you for anything you've done for a terrible book club. We appreciate it a lot. I yeah, I think when we hit like certain fandoms, we get kind of a bounce. So maybe this will be another episode that stirs a uh, a hornet's nest, shall we say? Oh yeah, our because- last one got us a lot of downloads because uh, apparently there's been a bit of a sustained hullabaloo around Mr. Rosansky and people were commenting in certain subreddits and like other forums that like all these two are beating a dead horse when it was like we well we didn't know that so yeah I mean we we didn't know shit about that I didn't know much about that guy like I said I did a very shallow googling and seemed like he was sort of a contentious figure but I didn't really understand why and yeah it was it was weird but whatever thanks for the traffic idiots I don't care what you think <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's kind of how I feel no, and um, hey, if you like the show and everything, keep listening. You're not an idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm in, I'm in the people who, you know, uh, the, all the people who give us one-star reviews on iTunes. Uh, or yeah, thought perhaps hilarious. we're just here to make fun of people that are already being made fun of way too much or something. Yeah. I mean, except we had no idea. Like, I didn't realize he was that reviled. Like, I I mean, 
I think he Whatever. had some defenders in those comments, actually. Oh, he did, yeah. Um, but yeah, it seems like this uh, this book series. Has, also, this is our indicator like, that we we are aware of you, motherfucker. No. <laughs> I was Sorry. honestly waiting for uh, waiting for the dude who wrote that book to like contact us, but I guess he hasn't found out about it or just doesn't care, which I'm fine with. I'd rather yeah, really, no, I'd rather he, not deal with it. He doesn't have to care at all. He doesn't have to. No, um, he probably shouldn't. Nah, well, whatever. Maybe I mean, a little. Maybe a little, depending on what he cares about. Yeah, I mean, if he wants to improve his writing, maybe he should give a shit. But whatever. It's it's not that important to me. I mean, we just do this because it's fun. And I mean, honestly, somebody like one of our listeners recommended that book, and that's why we read it. Like, we didn't yep. know shit about him. I mean, I still don't know that much. Although uh, reading comments about about the episode was pretty funny. But um, anyway. anyway, how about we take a poor positive spin and thank our patrons? <clears throat> yes. So thank you to <coughs> Greg, Veronica, Will, D, and Jared, all of whom fund this show and make it possible for us to afford hosting and books. If you too would like to become a patron like them, head over to patreon.com slash join slash terrible book club to check our extra content out and decide if you want to claim those rewards for yourself. Um, our Patreon content for 2019 is coming. We're finalizing our plans and we should have something out by the end of January as promised. Um, so we're not sure exactly what we're doing but chris and i are about to figure it out probably today or tomorrow yeah we've been cooking some some things and it's probably you know about to come out of the oven with our finalized ideas of you know we have to come up with stuff that's sustainable and doesn't take too much time yeah because i mean the last year when we did um we did the sort of truth series that was it was actually kind of a lot of work. Uh, I mean, it just yeah. because we had to sit and watch the episodes. Chris had to edit the audio together. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm not averse to doing something like that again, but we kind of need we needed a break from doing that exact thing. So we're going to do something I a little different. I think mostly the fact that we were doing that like every week was what was like yeah. really grinding us down. So it'll probably be more like a or maybe a month or biweekly thing. Yeah, like maybe the maybe on the off weeks, like a week we don't post an episode, we'll post Patreon content or something. So, um, so yeah. Anyway, if you're a patron, enjoy that. If you're not, sign up for the Patreon. And if you spend five dollars or more a month on us, then you get all this fun extra content, and you get other rewards too. But you can go look at it yourself. Um, you know, we also like hearing from people. So if you want to say hi, interact with us, please reach out to us on Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads, Facebook. You can also send us emails to uh, terriblebookclub at gmail dot com. That's how. We often get a lot of our recommendations. Um, and if you like the show, just do us a favor and share the show on social media. Please, for the love of God, write us an iTunes review. I, I don't know, man. It's so hard to get people to do it. And I understand why. Because it's like, if you don't use iTunes, you got to go there. you got to click on a thing. you got to write a review. you got to title it. I know. It's a pain in the ass. But we'd really appreciate it if you could do you that. You only got to do it once. Yeah, you only got to do it and once. And it's there forever. It's true. Um, like and- a bad tattoo. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm just hoping to combat the three one star reviews we have. One <laughs> I know was uh, what was that? James Gregory Brown or whatever his name. I don't remember his name. John Gregory Brown. John Arthur. It was like four John first Brown. names. It was like Bill, Bob, yeah. John, <laughs> yeah, Greg. The guy who wrote the Greg Bird Tits book. Tim, Bob, Jordan. Yeah, the guy who wrote the Birds book. I know for a fact <laughs> one of the one star reviews was from him because. It, we received it right after we got his complaining email, which was funny. And then the other two appeared recently, right after uh, the internet fucking cesspool got a hold of our last episode. So, like, I know where all those came from. Um, it doesn't It doesn't really matter, but it does help the show if, like, the show doesn't have a shitty review on uh, on iTunes. So Yeah, so slap us uh, some star extra stars on there if you actually like the show. You know, don't lie. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Like, don't lie. I mean, if if you like it, great. If you kind of think we suck, then I don't know. Give us like three stars instead of one. Like, that'd be cool. You know, just be like, yeah, it's a middling experience. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd much rather that than the one star. Sure. Yeah, uh, but whatever. I've talked enough. Uh, don't yeah. read Warriors into the Wild. By don't Aaron read Hunter. any of the other eighty don't. books either. Jesus so Christ. you know what? That we slashed a whole list right off for you, so you don't even have to look at that section of Amazon anymore. Just spare yourself. That's very true. Um, and I will say we're probably going to not do a kid's book for a while because we just did two children's books in a row. Although we didn't. I mean, this is one of those books that has uh, this wide This is YA appeal. more than kids, yeah. I would say. Yeah. So maybe we'll we'll find something different. Um, oh, yeah. Thank you to uh, our friend Trisket for finding this book. We, we ended up yes. reading this because we were just hanging out in the kitchen at Chris's house taking a break from recording uh, last time, and Trisket rolled in, and I think she literally just searched on Amazon for 
warrior cats and found this? I, I don't remember what prompted it at all, but um, it was just a silly Amazon search, and we were like, oh, wow, we got to read that. Sounds ridiculous. So thanks, for Skit, for finding that. Uh, we've got plenty of recommendations for 2019. In fact, we have too many things to choose from. Uh, I keep I getting haven't recommendations. Even yet. I it's... haven't even looked yet, Paris. I think you might be the one to just choose the next one and tell me what it is. Yeah, I've got some... Oh wait, I think I think we already talked about what we might do next. Uh, we're we're thinking about we're thinking about doing a self help book. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Self help uh, instructional book might be next. I'm ready. I I need help this year. Uh, yeah, after that Warrior Cats book, I need some help yeah. too. Uh, all right. Well, with that, we bid you a, a wonderful January. Welcome to 2019. I hope it sucks less than 2018 for you. Goodbye.